Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And we're going to spring in episode number three on Millennial Mike. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Hey, man. So one of the things I wanted to ask, because you are one of my students, also a content creator for a bonus section on out-of-state investing, is what are you doing to get ready, right? We obviously uh, have a changing real estate market. I believe uh, we are no longer doing good deals. We're only doing great deals. Uh, but I don't know if that's changed with out-of-state investing. I don't know what's going on. So I wanted to ask you, what are you doing to get prepared and then to take advantage about what is coming? Yeah. So uh, number one thing, I'm still looking at my market. I still got my ear to the floor. I want to look and see and, and, and feel the tectonic real estate plates shifting underneath me so I don't get caught in the earthquake. Instead, I can figure out what to do. Um, but I, you know... <laughs> Regardless of whether the recession is coming, regardless of whether rates are going up, there's a saying that both you and Dion say that's always true. It's always a good day to buy a great deal. And so when one comes my way, even though all this crap is going on, I'm still ready to deploy capital. So I have a deal that I'm going to make a phone call on here in about an hour, $29,000 house. Yes, the house is $29,000 for you West Coast investors like me. Please don't fall out of your chairs. Hold on to something. Um, networking is extremely important. You have coached me multiple times that one of the things I should focus on is networking more. So how I do that is by having a YouTube channel and Instagram and talking and answering every question I can. So many people come and ask me for a question or advice or a referral. And somewhere down the line, they might say, hey, did you see this property? And that's exactly what happened. I got a message saying, hey, did you see this property that got posted? So then I look at the post, I message the guy, I've got a phone call scheduled with him and I told him I'm ready to send earnest money and sign a contract because I know my market and I know that this $29,000 house with a brand new roof and some very minor cosmetic repairs is actually worth eighty dollars or $90,000. And if I can pick it up, spend a little bit of money and then either hold it till interest rates come better or cash out and leave some extra in there, I will create a nice, good cash flowing rental and get paid to own that house. So when you ask me, what am I doing to get prepared for the recession? It's the same thing you've been telling me to do for the last four years, which is pay attention, look at what's going on, talk to other people and be ready. I love that. That is, <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, a couple of quick questions. Uh, one of the things that I've done is I've changed how I've looked. I no longer look at first day listings. I start to look at days on market. I haven't used a day on market filter in like three or four years. Uh, it was certainly added to mine. Uh, I don't know your market. Has your market changed enough where days on market is interesting or is it not changing yet? So more stuff is staying on the market longer and you are seeing price reductions. But so one of the one of the things that I think gives people a little head fake here when they're saying, oh, pr housing prices are going to come down. Of course, I mean, look, we, we you on Realtor.com, I see the little arrow that's down and the little number that says how much it's dropped. What you need to understand, this is not a real housing price reduction. It wasn't worth what they listed it for. And you and I have talked about this already. They put on their, as you call it, wish pricing, or their maybe I'll get it pricing, or their best case scenario pricing, probably because they didn't listen to their realtor. And one of two things happens. They don't get their price, so they take it off the market. Or they realize, all right, let's drop it down a little bit. Well, once they've psychologically shifted into lowering their price some, you can probably get them to psychologically <laughs> shift to lowering it just a little bit more. Yeah. So um, days on listing for me, I haven't necessarily noticed much of a difference in terms of my particular market. Yes, things are staying on there more, but even, even houses that haven't been on there very long, you can still put in that lower oh, offer yeah. and, and get it accepted because they're not dumb and they're looking around at what's going on. And if it didn't sell within the first two days, mm -hmm. well, awesome. it's probably a good idea to take a deal. Awesome. The other thing that I've talked about uh, is, you know, for a couple of years now, we were in a market where we, we would all do a good deal, right? I talk good and great. Yeah. Uh, I, I have changed my stance where I will no longer do a good deal on my market. It's great mm -hmm. deals only. Uh, are you doing something similar or are you still doing good deals? No, like you, I mean, unfortunately, I would like to sit here and say that I'm racking in three deals a week and here the last or three deals a month, you know, but I'm not quite as big of a a big of an investor as you are. Um, yes, I have been shifting towards the best deals. Like the one that I just described earlier has a lot of meat on the bones. You know, a lot of people know if you're looking at a burst strategy, you want to be all in at 75% of the after repair value. That's not true in all cases, but it's a good general rule you can use, right? Well, in this one, I'm going to be all in, at, you know, 65% or 60%. So I'm looking for what has the best meat on the bones? And then from there, in this case, I'm dealing with a wholesaler. I'm probing and asking, 
Are they potentially willing to offer it on terms? Could I do some seller financing? Doesn't sound like that's going to be the case on this one, but you should ask those questions. You should, because I even said, look, I'll pay a couple thousand dollars extra for, you know, from 29, I'll take it to 34. If I can amortize that over 15 years at a good interest rate, I don't care. I'll way overpay for it. Well, not way, but I'll overpay for it if it cash flows better. That is awesome. So again, you're having fun. You're doing the work. You're not stopping. You're doubling down. You're networking. You're just doing all the right things. People, this is not a time to get scared and hide. This is a time to double down doing the work. Have a buy box. Be, be focused, right? You can't look at five markets, especially if you're a new investor. Stop it. You're, stop. Also, bigger is not better. I believe the commercial market's going to have its come up. It's in one of my big issues with this whole bigger is better. It's not always true. It's a sexy saying, but it's not always true. So at the end of the day, you need to follow and rinse and repeat what uh, Millennial Mike is doing. Where can they follow you? If you just type into Google or YouTube or Instagram, Millennial Mike, you'll see my videos and they'll all pop up. We talk about out-of-state investing. Awesome. Thanks again. Thanks for creating content. Bonus section, out-of-state. Appreciate it.